it's me here, Talk to the Foodie, and today I'll be showing you guys how to turn a box of cake mix into a Father's Day cake. Your boxed cake from your boxed cake mix, you could you would need any brand of cake mix you have. In this case, I'm using the Pillsbury Golden Butter. And as you can see on the back of the box, it says one third cup butter or margarine, which I have right here. I'm just using melted butter and one cup water. And here's my water and three eggs. Now you see I'm not making a cake with eggs and here is a substitute you would need for the eggs. You would need one three teaspoons of baking soda And along with the baking soda, you would need three tablespoons of either vinegar or lemon juice. In my case, I'm going to be using lemon juice. So you could instantly see that reaction happening in there. Okay, so this right here is going to be our substitute for the eggs. And what you want to do is you just want to mix it around a bit to get the baking soda and the lemon juice all together. Okay, so now what you want to do is you just want to sift through your boxed cake mix. Try to do one third at a time so that you could be able to sift it easily. Okay, so just Sift it. And you just want to do this for all the three times you're going to sift your cake mix through. Okay, now that the cake has been sieved, what you'd want to do is you would want to line your baking tray with parchment paper or flour and butter. And what you want to do is you want to set your oven to preheat at 350 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. Okay, so now you want to add in your melted butter. Your lemon juice and baking soda mixture. And your cup of water. And now, you just want to mix it all together to make a lump-free batter. So I'll see you when I've mixed this together and I have made a lump-free batter. Okay, so when your cake mix has started to mix together and you cannot see any visible flour pockets on the side, what you want to do is you want to mix this in the cut and fold method. This is to ensure that all the flower pockets that may be hiding in there really break off and combine into the batter. Now you can see that the cake batter is totally combined. Oh, and this is just optional. I really like this taste of vanilla. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And you just want to add that in. And you just want to give this a quick stir, like so. Okay, so in the end, this is how your batter should be. And now what you just want to do is you just want to pour in your cake batter. Okay, so this is how the cake looks like in the pan. And oh, by the way, my cake pan is 11 by 7 by 2 inch. You could use other cake pans like maybe the one suggested on the back, like the 13 by 9 inch, 2 8 inch rounds, 2 9 inch rounds, a bunt pan, and you could also make cupcakes with this. But I'm not. I'm going to use a 7 by 11 by 2 inch pan. And now what you want to do is you want to bake this for around, depending on the cake pan size, 
So if you if you have a 13 by 9 inch cake pan, you would want to make bake this for 34 to 38 minutes. Same with the two 8 inch rounds. And for the two 9 inch rounds though, you would want to bake this for 29 to 33 minutes. And for the bunt pan, 39 to 43 minutes. And if you're making cupcakes, 19 to 23 minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bake it around that time, more like um, 32 to 34 minutes. So if, you're, if you guys are using the same size pan as mine, you would want to bake it for that time too. So while our cake is baking, let's go on with the frosting. So what I'm going to use here is I'm using here heavy whipping cream. Make sure you also have heavy whipping cream, not heavy cream, as that would whip, but it would not have stiff peaks like the heavy whipping cream. And then I have my whisk here and a bowl. Okay, so what you want to do is you just want to chill these two together in the freezer for 10 minutes while you just want to refrigerate this for the same time. Okay, so the amount I'm using here is half a pint of the heavy whipping cream. You could use more or you could use less. So what you want to do is you just want to cut this open and pour it in the bowl. Okay, so here's the cream in the bowl. And as you can see, I switched to a different bowl because there was too much cream for it to be in that little bowl and it won't be able to whip. So now what you just want to do, you want to tilt the bowl like this at an angle and you just want to start going in full circles till you start seeing extremely big bubbles form on top of the surface. You could also use a hand mixer and a stand mixer. That would be way more quicker than this, but I'm just going to be using a hand whisk over here. Alright guys, so at this point you could see that this has reached the soft peak state because as you can see literally there are soft peaks. And this has been me about constantly whisking for about 7 minutes. So you have to whisk it some more to get more stiffer peaks. So if you want to add flavor to your whipped cream, here's what you need. So here I have one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two tablespoons of sugar, and two small bits of milk chocolate. Now what you want to do is you just want to add these three ingredients in here. this together a quick wix. Okay so here is how our cake looks right out of the oven. As you can see it's extremely spongy and now what you want to do you just want to take some of your whipped cream and fill it in your piping bag and you just want to keep this for later to frost some designs on top of the cake. And now what you just want to do just take your cream and just apply a generous amount on the cake. So I'll see you when I've frosted this whole thing. Okay, so this is how our cake looks when I've frosted it. And now what you want to do is you just want to fill a piping bag with the cream. And I've, I'm just using a star nozzle over here. You could use any type of nozzle. And what you want to do is you just want to pipe on the stars. like so. So I'll see you when I've covered the border with the stars. Alright guys, so here's how the cake looks after I've made those tiny little stars on it. And as you can see, this side is way smaller than this side because I started to run out of the frosting. And now what you want to do is you just want to take some chocolate shavings. Again, this is just milk chocolate. And you want to add it to the side of your cake. Like so, just all around the border. So I'll see you when I've added the chocolate. All right guys, so here's how the cake looks with all of the shavings around it. All right guys, so as this is a cake for Father's Day, I'm gonna write here, I'm gonna write on here something for my dad. And if you wanna write something of your own to your dad, or for any occasion, what you wanna do is you wanna take some melted chocolate. I took about four little pieces of it 
and you want to put it in a mini piping bag and you really don't need a piping tip for this so I'm just gonna add this in there Okay, so here it is, and I'm just going to pipe on the letter L. Alright guys, so this is how the lettering of the cake looks. I said, love you dad. You could say something else too, but that was the instruction on how to make your lettering for your cake. Alright guys, so this part is totally optional, but for more decoration, what you could do you just need to take a thin strip of parchment paper and I have my piping bag with the same chocolate and I'm just going to pipe out some shapes on here. Guys, so these are the little shapes I made. Now what you want to do is you want to pop this in the freezer for about 20 minutes. Alright guys, so here are the little shapes. So I, what do you have to do? You just have to unstick it from the parchment paper and attach it. So I really hope you guys try and enjoy this recipe. Thank you for watching.